Good morning, sir. This morning I'm on the top of Mount Saw. So just trying to get some photos now. Oh. So I've been here probably probably about an hour now, and just waiting for the sun to peak up now. As you can see, oh, as you can see. Sun's just coming up. We've got quite a lot of interest in the sky. We've got a few clouds. We've got quite a lot of interest in the sky. There's a few clouds about. Uh, no cloud inversion, unfortunately, but it should give uh, some opportunity for some good photos. I've already got a few from uh, earlier on in the morning. Hopefully, we get a nice pink sunrise now. And yeah. I'll uh, show you some of the settings that I've been using this morning. <laughs> so, you can see on ISO 100, F11, and at, oh, and the shutter speed kind of varies depending on the light, but obviously, so uh, change that. Obviously, changing the shutter speed depending on what the uh, the light is like um, so yeah I'll get a couple more shots and then come back to you in a couple of minutes okay so another thing that I found this morning is that there's quite a lot of difference between the foreground light and the sky and the Sun coming up obviously when the Sun comes up that's all bright light and then you've got the shadows of all the hills and everything so I don't have any filters on me, so what I'm having to do is bracket my photos. So if I show you here, most modern cameras, come on, focus. Most modern cameras will, um, most modern cameras will have a setting, there we go. Ooh. But most modern cameras will have a setting called Let's have a look exactly what it's called. Exposure compensation, uh, compensation or auto exposure balance, I presume that is. What it basically does is instead of taking one shot at one exposure, it brackets the shots and you can change it to take either seven, five, three, whatever shots. So what I've got it set to is two stops under, one stop under, exposed correctly, one stop over, two stops over. So then hopefully when you get home in Lightroom you can blend all those five photos together and you get a photo which is called a HDR image which is high dynamic range and that just allows you to adjust the brightness, the um, shadows and the dark, sh um, the shadows and the highlights to make sure that the skies are blown out and the shadows are really dull and you lose that clarity and um, sharpness in the image so hopefully that'll work so if I do this right now so get it make sure it's exposed correctly Let's see if I can get that a better shot of that there you go look exposed take that shot two second timer five and I don't know whether you could hear that or not oh don't know whether you could hear that or not, but it took five images. And those five images will, I'll blend together when I get home in Lightroom. And hopefully that will give me the um, ability to adjust the highlights and shadows to get that image perfectly exposed.
okay so I've uh, gotten a few shots the sun has now risen and I think the best of it's gone now uh, but I got a few shots we'll see how they look in Lightroom after I've blended them all together and stuff but uh, now it's time to pack up and head to I mean I was going to go up um, Kinder Scout but there's not many clouds and I don't know whether it's going to be that great for today so I think I might just go straight to Paddley Gorge and yeah see what it's like there so uh, time to pack up and head off Okay, so a bit of a change of plan. Instead of going directly to Padley Gorge, I thought I don't want to spend five or so hours there um, because the final place that I want to shoot is literally just around the corner. So instead of doing that, I've decided to come or try and get up to the Three Shears Hill Three Shires Head, which I believe is the direction I'm going, but I have no service up here. So, I'm relying on GPS to get me there, which, and I think I can actually see it, it's not that far away. The only issue is, I'm parked a little bit naughtily, because officially it is private land, and a little bit further up the, uh, not really a road, but the road, or footpath, or whatever, is, it does say private land, please do not park here, or no parking allowed. However, I parked a little bit further up and there aren't actually any signs where I've parked. So hopefully I'll uh, get away with it and I'm not gonna be that long. I'm only gonna walk up here, get a few photos and then head head back. Um, but the idea, I've seen loads of people do it. You've probably seen loads of people do it. It's um, a river or stream that runs down and there's a lot of rock forms that you can take long exposure shots over and it's, uh, yeah, it looks really cool. So. That's what I'm going to try and do, get there, take some long exposure shots and um, we'll see how they come out. It shouldn't be too long, I'm only going to get a couple of shots there and then uh, head off back to the car, which I hope I can find again by the way, because as I said there's no service here. So I've got to try and remember where I've come. Um, so yeah, I'll see you at the Three Shears or Three Shires head and we'll try and get some photos down there or up there. See you in a minute.
so I'm I'm here now. Um, I hope you can hear me over the water. Obviously, you can uh, hear that. So uh, here we are. There are um, a couple of different angles. I'll quickly show you them. Uh, I've just got to have a quick look round myself um, to find the best composition. But there's two different um, sh shots or particular shots you can get. Um, so you've got the um, you've got the waterfall. You've got the waterfall to the right, and you've got the waterfall to the left. Um, so, hope you can hear me. By the way, um, I'm going to try and shoot both of them. I'm going to try and uh, find a good place to shoot. Obviously, I don't want to drop any gear in the water. That would be a disaster. Um, However, I want to get a, I want to get the best shot I can. So I want to be. You need to risk it a little bit. Um, I think for these kind of shots, I'm going to go low and see how we go. So I'll, go, I'll get set up and I'll um, show you from there. Okay, so I've uh, got my first. Oh, that's a bit bright. Got my first shot um, lined up. I'm using two filters. I've got a 10-stop ND filter and a polarizer. 10 stop filter is just going to be used to smooth out that water, get a nice uh, flat, streaky water look. Uh, and then that polarizer is just taking the glare off of that water and off the rocks in front. I'll show you the um, where I've got my camera positioned in the composition now. So here's the first shot. And the settings that I'm using, if I just go. So obviously I'm in bulb mode. Oh, can you see that? Let's see if you can get. I'm in bulb mode, F16, ISO 100. Um, and I believe the exposure time at the moment I've set to a minute. I'm just playing around with that just to get the right exposure level. Um, so that's the, the first shot. And the second shot I'm going to get in a minute, um, but I'll get a couple more like this and I'll show you those now. Okay, so I've taken a few shots now. I'm uh, just taking the exposure now or taking the shot now. I've upped it to a minute and a half now, so I'm shooting the second one and it's all the rocks fairly dark, so longer exposure is needed to get the uh, to get the light in. Um, the shot I'm taking now, I'm not really that sure about. I just whacked it up and just thing, but I've actually spotted something that might look a bit better now. Um, some of the settings, I've whacked it down to f11, um, just to get it a bit more sharp, and then. Um, yeah, ISO 100, and I think I'm at about 15 mil. Yeah, I'm at about 15 mil, but um, I'll set up the next composition and then I'll uh, show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've got the next shot um, set up. It's right down here. So the only difference is with this shot is it's lower down, and um, what I'm picturing in my head is you're going to get the flow of water down the waterfall and it's going to follow and this it's just going to follow a leading line so that's the intention with this shot settings wise settings wise very similar again uh, bulb mode f11 iso 100 um, i've been messing around with the um, white balance i believe i'm on about 4500 kelvin so it's just going to make it a little bit bluer or oh, not bluer, but you're going to get that bluer tint to the water and as it uh, smoothens out. And bulb mode, and I've upped it to two minutes because, again, it's gone dark. So, um, yeah, I'll uh, take this exposure now. See if you can see it. I'm not sure whether you're able to see it very well. I mean, there, uh, you can't really see it. I'll take it, though. So, once again, I'm on a two-second timer. Um, and then two minutes for that exposure. I'll take that, see what it looks like. 
and that'll probably be the last shot at this location because I am parking a bit sketchy and I've been longer than I was expecting because I've kept having to wait for people that were um, crossing the composition and I don't really want to have uh, other people in the composition and they can't really ask them to move so just have to wait it's one of them things but um, could be worse so we'll just see how this composition comes out if it's okay we'll uh, head off back to the car and finally get going to uh, Padley Gorge if I can find a car park that is. Okay, so left three shires or three shires head or whatever, you, however you pronounce it. Um, I left a bit sooner than I wanted, even though I said I was going to take a few more shots and then leave. The main reason I left was because I managed to get my polarizer stuck to the end of my 10 stop filter. So I couldn't tell because when I got the 10 stop filter on, the uh, digital screen viewfinder is pitch black or pretty much pitch black so I couldn't tell whether the polarizer was set right whether it was doing anything or what so I decided right that's clearly a sign to say it's uh, time to go home or not home but time to go to the next spot so I mean I got probably four five six images from there and I'm happy with well it, from what I saw on the screen I'm happy with happy with them so hopefully they came out as well as I think they did um, but now I'm on the way back to the car which I really hope hasn't been towed or is still there and I actually managed to leave the GoPro which does all the time lapses when I'm driving I managed to leave that in the windscreen I didn't even stop it from the time lapse coming here so let's hope that no one's decided to break in and nick that as well because that would be bad so, fingers crossed the car's there and it's not been broken into, and then when we're there, we'll get straight down to Padley Gorge, find a car park. I still, have, I still haven't had anything to eat yet, and it's going on, oh, it's, it's half past 12, so it's not too bad, but um, I think I'll drive down to Padley Gorge. When I get there, I'm just gonna sit there, chill for a little bit, get something to eat, get something to drink, and then we'll have a wander around there and see what's going on. Try and get some more long exposure shots. Okay, so made it to Padley Gorge. Well, actually, I'm a bit further up than Padley Gorge. Um, I just, there was nowhere to park when I put it in the sat nav, so. I just had to keep going until I found somewhere to park and there's a little lay-by or parking area at the side of the road that I could get into so I just stopped here and I'm, it's like um, it's like a park sort of thing which has a uh, river or stream running through the middle of it is that's where I am and I've just been walking down the length of the stream just looking for any compositions that I like I've got plenty of time since I didn't do the kinder scout walk so basically gained about an hour because I didn't do that so I've got plenty of time, so I'm just wandering up and down uh, trying to find the composition and I think I've found something. So here, there's, there's, the, uh, there's the waterfall there or, and then there's also this little pool of foam. Now, I don't know what what exactly it is about that but it drew my uh, attention so I'm gonna get my camera out to probably walk down down there and uh, get my camera out see if I can get a composition that's okay um, again if I do take one it's gonna be a long exposure so 10 stop ND filter and possibly a polarizer although there isn't much glare uh, but I might just use it anyway because where the water's falling it, it, there is quite the rocks are quite wet there so that might help a little bit there so I mean and then there's a little another one just here so I might see if I can get a shot of that if not it's fine and I'll just keep walking down I'll walk down there for a bit more and then back up to 
uh, the top where I parked the car, there's a few bridges up there and it's a bit more open and not as, uh, there's not a lot, there's two, there's quite a lot going on here, that's what I'm trying to say. So it might be hard to get a composition that works, but we'll give it a go and yeah, so I'll just set the camera up and once I've got it set up and everything and trying to find the composition, I'll come back and let you know what I'm thinking. Okay, so uh, I've got a composition set up down here. Um, however, I'm not sure it's working. So I'm giving it a trial just to see. If it doesn't work, I'll just move somewhere else. But uh, I mean, maybe just a bit further down here. But um, settings wires and what I've got set up on it, uh, I've got again t 10 stop ND filter with polarizer. I did use polarizer, it makes quite a big difference on those on those big rocks, uh, those big rocks, because uh, they are wet, so it makes quite a big difference with the glare. And um, then I've got F11. Uh, on bulb setting, well, yeah, so F11 ISO 100. I'm on bulb and I've set it to three minute exposure at the moment. We'll see how it comes back, I can always change it, but I'll give it a couple of shots, see how it looks. I might actually move a bit further up. Um, yeah, I don't know, we'll see, how, we'll see how it looks. You never really know with a long exposure because it can look so different when you, uh, when you finish it. So we'll see how it turns out, if it looks if there's nothing to it, we'll uh, move further down, and hopefully, well, there's definitely some, there's definitely some photos here. It's, uh, yeah, it's just quite a lot of, there's just quite a lot going on here. If you can see, if you can see over here, there's uh, just all these tree, all these trees. There's just chaos, absolute chaos. There's stuff everywhere. So it is hard to get one singular composition and it to work so we'll see how it goes um, that composition or that shot has just finished I believe so we'll see how that turned out if it's no good we'll move somewhere else but it's just nice to be out so yeah well uh, we'll see how that looks and I'll get back to you and let you know what I'm thinking So, I tried a few shots there. So, um, I'm trying uh, just a little one here. So, the idea of this one is it's a bit closer up, so there's less going on. Um, I get all this that's going to be uh, blurred, and I'm getting this little pool here. So, on the previous photo or composition that was taken, I upped the ISO to 800 just to get that um, exposure time down a little bit, because otherwise, it was maybe a 10, 12 minute exposure. So with the 800 ISO, I managed to get, with 800 ISO and F8, I managed to get an exposure time of three minutes. Now I've taken the uh, ISO down to 400 and the exposure time up to five minutes. So hopefully that comes out right. Um, so yeah, still F8. It just takes too long with F, uh, F11, it's, there's a bit too dark, and with the 10 stop filter, it just makes it too dark. Really, you need a six stop or something, but I haven't got one, so. You have to cope with what you've got. So, uh, we'll see how it turns out, and I'll show you um, later on what it looks like. Um, even if it's not great, I'll still show you. Just, you can always learn from your poor uh, shots, so. I'll show you anyway. Okay, so the last shot that I took when I spoke to you last actually came out really well. Well, from what I could see, it looked really good. So instead of packing up straight away, I decided to take a couple more shots. I took one that was really cool and one which was like fairly warm and then I'll just compare and see which one I like the most when I get home in Lightroom. Um, and I'll show you the two and the settings I used and everything. All I did was 
switch the camera to manual white balance and instead of just using either like daylight, tungsten and whatever, cloudy mode, I went to the image that has a K, um, stands for Kelvin, and then I adjusted that so the lower you go, the cooler your image or the more blue you're going to get in the image, and the higher the number, the warmer, so the more oranges, greens, blue, yeah, not blues, oranges and greens and stuff like that. It's basically going to warm the whole image up, make it look more like daylight, kind of. You'll see anyway, I'll show you those pictures in a second. So, um, just walking back up now. I've packed up, I'm not, I'm not going to bother shooting anymore here, it's getting on. And I wrote, before I came this morning, I wrote down a schedule sort of thing, just to go by, like, roughly. Um, so obviously that in included the Kinder Scout walk, which didn't happen. However, we did go to the Three Shire Head or whatever it is. So that added a bit of time on, and then we got here a bit early, um, spent quite a lot of time down here, really. And then, um, yeah, so then the time that I set for going off to Surprise View was quarter past three. Um, and that's the time which I really needed to be going because otherwise by the time I get there, it'll be dark. So it is now 10 past three. So we're not doing too bad for timings. Um, by the time I get there, it's only like a five minute drive. By the time I get there, it'll probably be quarter past 20 past. Um, so we're in plenty of time. Um, and uh, yeah, so lucky in the end we got a shot, but um, I'm happy from what I could see out here, but we'll see when we get home. Um, anyway, I'll carry on walking back to the car and I'll talk to you when I get to Surprise View and when I get all set up for that. Catch you in a minute. So made it to surprise view. It was literally two minutes around the corner. Um, managed to make it without any sat nav because uh, I didn't have any surface. But yeah, made it. So it's actually gone really cloudy, which is not great. I don't know what the visibility is going to be like, but we'll see when we get around the corner. Uh, I hope this path takes me where I want to go, but we'll see. I mean, it might make it quite good actually if there's um, some cloud about. We'll see. So I'll uh, meet you when I get to the spot and fingers crossed that it's not too cloudy, we can't get a shot away. The next shot that I would like to do is wait, I need to wait until it gets a bit darker and then I want to get a long exposure. And what, if I can, I want to try and get the cars going both directions and get the trail of the lights all the way up and all the way down. So you'll get one way you'll get the whites, one way you'll get the reds. Hopefully it'll work out, we will see. Got to be careful to go step back because there is a big cliff just to the side of me. So I'll try and get these, uh, these shots and... Um, yeah, I'll try and get these shots and uh, I'll just put you on a time lapse and then when I'm done, I'll show you the images and yeah we'll take it from there. Otherwise so I've uh, finished shooting for the day now. Unfortunately I didn't get the shot uh, that I was looking for at this last location. There just wasn't enough traffic and yeah it just didn't work. But never mind. Um, still had a great day shooting. Got some good photos I think other um, locations so uh, I will I know I've put 
various uh, photos up throughout the video but at the end I'll just put a showcase or show reel of the best photos I've taken today and um, yes yeah, so I'll put that right at the end so stay right till the end other than that thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed please leave any comments or advice down below I'm always uh, very open to receiving any advice that to make me better and hopefully There'll be another video coming up soon of some other different locations. So look forward to that. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please like the video. Um, and, yeah, and subscribe if you really want to. You don't have to, but yeah. It's a, it's a new channel, so um, hopefully I'm going to do a lot more of these kind of videos um, throughout the last part of this year. So obviously not many this year, but... And then all next year, hopefully I... Uh, I can get quite a lot of videos out for you guys. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one very soon hopefully.